Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. This is our third episode here of House of the Dragon on Trekking Across the Universe on the NDB Media Network. If you want to follow on all of our programs, they're down at the bottom on the, some people call Chiron, other people call it the ticker. It's ndbmedia.net. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and of course, Twitch TV. A lot of stuff going on in episode number two. And as you know, today we're going to be covering uh, the Amazon series, The One Ring as well. But since this is House of the Dragon, we're going to be getting to this episode. It is episode two in preparation for episode three. First thing I said, there was going to be a time jump. Three uh, six months. But hey, it is what it is. And uh, I think that's the only thing I got right. I think we had dragon counts. Uh, I think there were two dragons in this episode. It was kind of cool which matches the first episode, and uh, the the whoring around. There was very little of that. Talked about quite a bit, but we didn't get any of that. There was uh, almost no, no uh, HBO-ness when it comes to it. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am Lord Roger of the House of Fontenot. It is Fontenot. So don't forget... Uh, we would like to have your uploads, your episode reviews, uh, 15 to 30 second review on the episode. Send it over to us and uh, we'll post it and we'll see who get the uh, best prize. So want to thank everyone for watching us and thank you everyone for joining us. So uh, it's really good stuff. Game two, uh, game two, episode two. Wow, really good stuff. And you have to bear with me because I have tons of notes because I've been watching quite a bit of television today. As I mentioned, the one ring, and now, of course, episode two, the rogue prince. You know what's going on. You know what happened. The king has an heir, and the brother didn't like it. He got banished. And uh, as we find out at the very beginning of the episode, it felt like a Game of Thrones episode. We had the Game of Thrones type animation, the music, uh, really good stuff. Did enjoy it. And uh hey gets right to it as i mentioned there was a time jump we have to deal with pirates prince corliss or lord corliss is complaining about the fact that he's lost four ships now and he's worried over the stepping stones this pirate who's doing quite a bit of damage has a unique way of dealing with everyone that isn't on his side and generally he's feeding them to the crabs Ugh. really awful evil stuff so I, I think we did see a little bit at the very beginning. Ah, it's horrible. These people are just doing their jobs, and unfortunately, they're paying the price. So today, since it's very hot in here, you have to forgive me. I did go with a little bit of the more conventional drink. I had to use ice today because I wasn't smart enough to put it in the refrigerator or freezer. It is only 101 degrees outside. That means it is very hot in here. I don't know if you can see my my house. They arrived. The house pendants. But I think they had arrived for uh, the last episode. So I don't know. I'm kind of bragging about them. They're back there. You can see one right there and the other one right there. Don't forget, if you have any pictures, send them to us. We'd love pictures about drawings, things that you own, stuff like that. It'd be kind of cool to share. Uh, I have my grog ready for the Lord of the Rings portion once we get there and uh, I think it'll be fine man boy are my cups everything is sweating so am I I'm sweating like a like a pig Ugh. I do apologize so if it's a little shinier it's not due to the makeup but anyway so we know what's going on the brother is taking over Dragonstone he's trying you know Prince Damon he's trying to get under the king's skin and uh, what are they going to do about it and again, as I mentioned, there's all the stuff that's happening out in the stepping stones. The Lord Corliss is not happy. Now, it's been six months after the death of Prince or Queen Emma. And we find out that father and daughter have really not spoken as of yet. So it's not a good thing. Uh, Alicent, from the very first episode, has been spending time with the king and apparently has not been telling Rhaenyra's anything. So... When it comes time to talking to the king, they mention that. Or the king mentioned Valer uh, Valeris says, please do not tell anything 
to my daughter. She may not understand. So there was already some understanding there, I suppose, between the two. And uh, it's a little eerie, but it's something that we're not accustomed to. Uh, if we go by the age, we assume that Allison is 15 as well. She might be a tad older. I don't know. But we got some things going on. So Damon has taken over Dragonstone. He has the guard that went with him, I guess, all 2,000 soldiers. I'm a, maybe, maybe not. They didn't make that clear, but they did say the, the guard went with him. So he has his own private, uh, uh, private army. And we see some of the ramifications in the king when he cut himself. Apparently, it he is not well. Remember, on his back, he has a lesion that is just not curing. And when he kicked out Damon, he cut himself on the Iron Throne. And in this episode, they're having to deal with it. They're using maggots to try to kill or clean out the wound. He has a lot of dead skin. And maggots were used to some effect in the Middle Ages. So uh, it is not going well for our king. Now, of course, we also learned that the heir to be is still serving in court to everyone. And when she comes up with an idea, of course, Lord Corliss says, hey, wow, she's got an idea. Apparently no one else does. Of course, dad doesn't want to hear it. She should know her place. And uh, she doesn't want to play because she's very sharp. She's sharper than most of them. Plus, she knows family. It's a family affair. So she wants to impress upon them. So the hand of the king of ours says, you know, man, we've got something better for you to do. And then she interviews the knights. It turns out that only one knight, uh, what was his name? Uh, Christian Cole of, I believe, there were six knights to head the new uh, watch. Only one of them has combat experience. And, of course, the answer is, well, you have to understand that we're in a time of peace. There's no one that has combat experience. But Sir Kristen did. He was a foot soldier uh, in the Stormlands. And, uh, of course, he says that's the best candidate. Of course, the hands is, but, 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 you don't understand. There's strength is built on strength. And everyone, you know, everyone wants to be in on it. So you have to make concessions and you have to choose people it's just it's the way things are done and it's just a shame and she doesn't know that yet you know she says i want a soldier to defend my father so and turns out that her chain her suggestion does stand well lord corliss and the uh queen who never was do meet with the king and they ask hey you know uh, may we speak to you and, oh yeah yeah of course cousin Lord you know what's going on they're having conversations about you know normal things of life and then the king finally says all right get to it what do you want and of course at this point they make it clear that they want to strengthen the realm because the king has a daughter for the first time ever that has been named the heir. He looks weak, lost his wife, stuff is brewing all over the place, and, you know, it's the ship of state must continue, and it must look good. So the king must take a wife, and they offer up their daughter. Turns out she's 12. Wow. And uh, she's really cool, she's really nice, real sharp. Everyone speaks highly of her, but she's 12. And uh, wow. But unfortunately, she wasn't the one visiting with the king. Apparently, Allison has been doing so for about six months or so. So it was much easier for the king to make his decision. So uh, then we learn Damon pulls the stunt. Good stuff. And uh, he's doing it because he wants to get a rise. So, king has to respond, hand of the king goes over, 
And lo and behold, Rainies goes over and takes care of it herself. She knows what her her uncle is out to do. And she stands up to him. She does risk. You never know. It's early on, but she does risk it and she does uh, get them to calm down. He doesn't vacate because she even tells him, hey, this is my house. You're in my house. He goes, yeah, yeah, but you're not even of age yet. It's 15. I guess it's 18. It has three years before something happens. And folks, everyone in the chat room, everyone watching us, if you want to let us know who you are, where you hail from, if you have any comments on the episode, we'd love to hear them right now. We're reviewing the second episode of HBO's House of the Dragon. And uh, it's really good stuff. A lot of stuff is happening. As I mentioned, she stands up to him and she says, I'm right here, Uncle. You can settle it right now. And uh, no, they, they, they have a connection. He's not willing to do that. At least not yet. I don't know. If, I don't know if he does. He 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 has an affinity for his niece. It did look a bit creepy in episode one, but they're family, no matter what. So, yeah, it's gonna come back. It may be in an episode down later. Damon may say something. It's right there. He had your chance. Maybe his wife will say, it was right there, buddy. Could have, you could have ended it. Stop your yapping. But it didn't come to that. Of course, Dad finds out he's really unhappy. And uh, he knows. But she's skilled. I loved it when he's really angry at her. She walks in. Says, what What did you do? This and this. You're my only wife. Yeah, can I have a seat, Dad? He didn't yell at me. I don't get to sit down. His reaction, the face that he gives, is really funny. So, like, you're going to have to learn. Now, there was also the conversation before then, which happened with her uh, aunt. He says, does it trouble you that your dad's looking for a, a new wife? They, you know, the back and forth that went over on that was really, really good. Uh, it was really skilled. And uh, she asks, it bothers you, does it not? She goes, of course it bothers me. Does it not bother you? It's your daughter. It's 12. She says, of course it does. And then, of course, the queen who never was says, but I understand the order of things. Do you understand the order of things? And he says, here's the hard truth. Men will torch the realm before a woman ascends the throne. She says, well, you know what? I'm going to start a new order when I'm queen. So, little 15-year-old is standing up to your aunt real well. That was, of course, before uh, the, the egg was stolen. So, I went through a lot of it real quick. Of course, as I mentioned, uh, the king is mad at her, and they have a conversation. He says, look, I'm doing things that I have to do for the realm. And she says, you are the king. Your first duty is to the realm. And, of course, they get together, and then right away he holds court. And he gives the news. I'm taking Allison as my wife. Corliss throws a tantrum, leaves, and uh, he's going to marry her before Spring's End. So I think she's going to be married right away. But in the next episode, things are going to be getting a little tougher. Now, before the episode ended, of course, we did see that Corliss does go to see Damon. And he's talking crap about the king. And there was one point where even Damon said, hey, like, like, like I, I get it. I, all right. I get you're angry and you got some stuff that you want to get done here. And that's fine. So uh, I'm, I'm all right with that. But he, he's still my brother. You're not going to talk badly about him. So, hey, it is what it is. It's quite a bit. Quite a bit of stuff happened in that episode. Uh, now that we have some machinations going on, I would give this episode a B minus. I think there was more. There's not that much in the way of action per se. There's no major battles, or but that's probably going to happen in the upcoming stuff. It's, now that we've seen the previews, uh, Damon is going to get involved, and I think he's going to uh, he's going to make the king look bad. He's going to go out there. In my thoughts, 
he's going to resolve the problems over in the stepping stone. And he's going to put Lord Corliss in a much better position of power. Um, the marriage, I don't think it's going to take place right away. Because Alicent and Rainey have to work their stuff together. Or they have to work it out. Uh, I don't think they're going to do it in the next episode. I think they're going to have more of an argument. And it's going to take some time for them to resolve. Because she's going to be stepmom. And I wonder which one's older. So, yeah. It'd be interesting if Allison was uh, even a day younger. It doesn't matter, just to be younger. And then to be the stepmom. So, it's good stuff. Uh, if you have any opinions on the episode, I'd love to hear them. And uh, some of your ideas on where we are going to be moving forward on this. I'd love to know. Damon, I got right the time jump. I don't think there's going to be a time jump per se. I don't think they're going to get married right away. But watch, first episode. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. And it's done. I don't believe that's going to happen just yet. Uh, Allison, as the future uh, stepmom and her, have to have it out. And it's not going to be good. It's going to get real ugly. So we have to have that happen. So... And I keep calling her Rhaenyra's. I apologize. That's the uh, the ant. It's Rhaenyra. So that's the silly's daughter. So good. All right. Uh, I don't see very many comments in the chat room right now. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. The One Ring. Uh, really good stuff. Really happy about it. Uh, I'm disappointed that there are some people that just do not like it, and so be it. Uh, they were put off by the preview. And I think I saw one or two, but folks, I have to tell you, watching a preview is just a tease. It's a taste. Con Air. No, thank goodness I remember. I saw the preview for Con Air. That was the late 80s, maybe early 90s, and I saw the movie. The entire movie was in the preview. Sad. All the good stuff, funny parts, whatever. It was done. But this stuff upcoming for the One Ring, uh, I'm not going to judge everything. I, 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 I'm I, sorry. I, I guess I'm old because I'm not going to make a snap judgment on something just on a preview. I really don't have time for other people to say, oh, well, that preview doesn't look good. Previews misfires. I've seen previews of movies, especially for my series Star Trek, that I've disliked. I'm like, oh man, it doesn't doesn't dissuade me. I'm gonna go watch the movie. I, I suppose I like to see previews just to see of what I may see. That's it. That's all it is. It's a tease. So I get it. And if the tease is good, I guess you're gonna go for it. The tease is bad. I suppose you're not. But I am disappointed that so many people that I know in my universe have just written off the one ring. And we had the first two episodes dump on Friday, and I was able to see them early. Uh, apparently, if you don't have Amazon Prime or depends on the service, on the Pacific Coast, you had to wait till 6, East Coast, 9 p.m. to watch it. But I was able to watch it because I had Amazon Prime. And as soon as it was available on Friday, I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to check it out. No, I didn't check it out then. I checked out at 1 o'clock this afternoon to watch both episodes and then watch uh, the Game of Thrones episode again. So first episode is a Shadow of the Past. We have Galadriel. And there are going to be spoilers in this too, folks. So understand that. And, um, you know, we get to see that stuff is going on. The Galadriel, I'm not going to compare her to a Mary Sue because she is an elven uh, queen, but wow, yeah, she's a super heroine in every sense. It didn't put me off, it's just, well, I guess I did if I'm commenting about it right now. The Galadriel, I know, didn't do that stuff. I granted she's younger, she's about a thousand years younger, or two or three thousand years younger. I don't know, I forget the way it works the ages in the Lord of the Rings, where it's uh, 
3,000 years per age, and this is the second age. So uh, it, it's it's a lot. I don't know how young Galadriel is in this one. But uh, they talk about Morgoth. They actually talk about the Cimmerils in the episode, which is from the Silmarillion, which is the story in Lord of the Rings, which basically everything is based off of. And it is a book that I'm working through myself, but it's the Cimmerils. Morgoth. Actually, there, there's a line in there that... Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find it. Morgoth destroyed the light of our home, and that's why we're at war, and that's why Galadriel is following them. And there was a conversation with Cimmerils. I'm gonna have to see if I find it again in my notes. And I don't have it at the moment. They talk about that they had to leave Eleanor to go and liberate Middle Earth. They didn't even understand the word death. There was no word death in the Elven language. And then, of course, we learn later on that now they have many names for it. And Galadriel is doing what she does because she lost her brother, who was there to fight the darkness, fight the evil, fight the one that was left. They beat Morgoth, but they believe Sauron is not dead. And, you know, um, she is out in the wastelands. I believe it's referred to as Forward Waith or Ford Waith. And she's leading her, her company, well, her squad, for lack of a better word. It's not a platoon. A platoon would be uh, uh, 40, somewhere around there. A squad is, I think, up to 12, something like that. So she had about 12. But uh, she talked about that when her brother died, in that darkness that she felt, his vow became hers, and she kept it. And that was to liberate Middle Earth, to keep it free from the darkness, which is Morgoth slash Sauron. Sauron is the one that survived. And it's in the Cimmerils quite a bit. So. I was hoping uh, Lord Dream would be here because be, he'd be able to clarify uh, something very important that happened in that episode. But anyway, they enter a place where the place is so evil that even their torches do not offer warmth. So that was kind of interesting. And she discovers a mark. And the mark is a mark of Sauron. So she knows he's not dead. But the others in the company believe that he is. And they're like, you know what? We're done. We've been doing this for months. We are way past our order. And uh, she says, look, he was here. These orcs, whatever happened to them here in this place where they are, they were dealing with some magic, which got out of control. They're like, yeah, okay. Then a snow troll shows up. And they're like, yeah, we're out of here. And we're, that's our evil. We're done. Find some hobbits, some important hobbits in there. And uh, there's really good stuff. They're searching for blueberries. But there are things out there starting to show up in Middle Earth. And these hobbits, they're not in Hobbiton. They're not in the Shire. They're out and about. And they move a bit. I believe they refer to it as a migration. They, they do move around. But when they're together, I think one of them tells them, nobody goes off trail. Nobody walks alone. We're safe. Because Nori asks, haven't you ever wondered what's out there? Says, what's at the end of the river, at the end of the path? She goes, we always stay together. We do not have to worry. The, the hobbits, the, the hobbit is telling uh, Nori that, look, men, elves, and uh, dwarves, they have to suffer. We don't. We have it made. So it's not for us to worry. What is at the end of the road or at the end of the trail, the river, or whatever. So. We do meet Elrond 
and uh, he's having a wonderful conversation with her, and he's like, yeah, okay, look, 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 let's be real here. You've earned passage to Valinor. You're going. But don't make a big thing of this, because the king knows that the others, he knows exactly what happened. He knew of the little rebellion in the ranks, and he's not happy about it. But behave. This is it. You got your ticket to Valinor. She doesn't want to go. Elrond talks into it. At the very last minute, you know exactly what happens. But um, it was good. Now, I really don't want to give all of the spoilers away. I don't want to give absolutely everything. But that's the start of the episode, the one. There were some scenes. Um, and, and the reason why I say that is only because, oh, sorry, I flinched. There was an earthquake when we were doing sports talk with the guys yesterday on Saturday. And... Uh, it hit at 10.04 a.m., and it was at 3.6, so it really shook up the place. It was kind of cool. So, but anyway, so right now when I get a quake alert, I'm like, where is it? 6.1 in the southeast Pacific rise. So it's got to be somewhere west of South America, way out there in the Pacific. So we learn what the elves are doing. They're kind of like a, 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 not a pacifist army. That was lame. But they've invaded trying to keep the peace and people don't like that they're there so i i know that humans don't they're derisive in their attitude towards them and they have epithets that they use and it's really not nice but uh they're like not a conquering army but they're the occupying force so they're not well liked I apologize, I'm just trying to go over my notes right now. We learn of Erendir. He's an elf that has been on station for over 79 years. And he has, uh, he's got something for one of the humans right there. I believe her name was Bronwyn. And uh, she's got something for him too. There, there, There's some chemistry there, there's some excitement, but uh, that's it. And as soon as they get sent off, to Valinor, the other elves, the king says, hey, peace. going to start withdrawing everyone. So, and when What's-Her-Face was on her way back to, or not way back, but as she's on her way to Valinor, I guess she jumped ship. So, and then it was very well done because it was obviously she's going to jump ship, and then we see something flying across the sky. Don't know who that wayward soul is. When you look at Amazon Prime, it just it doesn't give you a name, gives the name of the actor, but nothing. I have to believe that's Gandalf. I'm gonna say it is Gandalf, but I, I'm not a hundred percent certain, but we shall see. Good evening, Michael Day. How are you doing, young man? I'm doing pretty good. I got too involved trying to watch, trying to catch up on uh, the rings, and I was like, oh uh, did I'm you gonna... finish that? No. Which, where, where, how far did you get? I got through the first episode and a little bit into the second. Okay. I am actually yeah. at the end of the first episode right now. Oh, oh, so, okay. Uh, uh, we're not uh, going to reveal everything. Um, and now that you're here, Michael, I'm definitely not going to reveal everything because that's not the point, but it's to talk about some of the things. Maybe we can talk about episode uh, two and three next week. We'll continue with one. But I gave a very quick uh happenings and i was gonna comment right now about that thing we saw rocketing across the sky so uh before i ask you that um there was an elf that was on station out on the frontier in the southlands i believe his name is uh Aaron Deer, and i said that it looks like he has a feelings for one of the human females there her name is Bronin and their son, their son Theo. Theo discovers something in the barn. Remember that? Yes, yes. The um, what do you think that is? Well, now, I now I, I will be honest. I mean, I was getting very confused on a lot of it. Oh, but, there was a lot to get confused yeah, over. Um, it looked like to me. 
see, I don't remember names, but it looked like that object had the symbol that was the um, mark of the... Sauron? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, folks, at the very beginning, and I'm going to back up, when Galadriel and her company are in the wastelands, they're they're really you know it's I, I guess they're in the way the wastelands they refer to it as uh uh ford way so if i remember my map of middle earth that's kind of like in the north or northeast where the mountains are because ro ro rovanian which they mention is east of middle earth and north of mordor so want to just keep that in the map where galadriel is way up there they're searching and they're the, the elves are done they they've implied that they've been not for months they've been doing this for years it's like they they want to go home they're done and we we know that there was a rebellion in the ranks and they ditched but in that cave where they went into they discover a symbol and right away she says that is the mark of sour yeah yeah she says that they said well we don't know it could have been years that he's been here or it could have been centuries and she says no this is a marker for the orcs and then the orcs were in the cave and something happened did it remind you of the episode the pegasus from star trek the next generation it did it did yeah for yeah, star trek fans uh, the Pegasus was an interdimensional cloaking device, if you believe that. It was able to pass through stuff. but it, So it's not a cloaking device, but it was an interdimensional mechanism. And people got caught in the walls and stuff. And yeah. see the images of the orcs. She said, they're, they're, they were fooling around with some bad juju. So, uh, But what they were, she couldn't tell. She commented that our torch, well, one of the guys said, hey, I don't feel anything of, from the torch. And she was like, yeah, this place is so cold, so evil that even our torch, is, the warmth of our torch, is, it's, it's, it's gone. So we did see that symbol uh, that represents what we believe represents Sauron. So, yeah, so, so that is, so you think that's what it was too? Or yeah, not, what what Theo? Yeah, what he has, had. which yeah. I, he, you know, he he took his friend there, which was I believe the same kid that was talking crap to uh, Aaron Deer in the bar, I think. Hmm. And I'm he's not sure. you guys got to go, you got to go. But anyway, I, I think it was the same kid. But anyway, it went in there and he says, "Dude, if they find out that we're in this bar, they're gonna knock our teeth out." I thought that was kind of funny. It's like wow, and sure enough, someone was coming, but it was something else, and they ran off. But anyway, so he takes mm. him to the barn and he buries it in his house. Yeah, uh, that was not very bright. <laughs> no, it wasn't very bright. So, um, what do you think? The okay, I'm switching gears real quick. Okay, the hobbits, the hobbits, because they're not in the Shire, obviously, they're not. They're like migrating. They're not. Uh, they're they're not there. They the, the because if you notice when when two humans went by, they covered everything up. You know, they 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 put on their own cloaking device, for lack of a better word. They were able mm -hmm. to hide very well while the humans went by. So as humans went by, they're like, oh hey, they're, they're gone. You know, we're good. And it looks like they they travel around quite a bit, but when nori the young lady the young hobbit takes her sister out and all the other little hobbits uh she tells her sister there was a wolf remember she mouths the wood a wolf and then they're like oh, okay all right guys we got to go home we got to go home. is that what you think it is what was up on the mountain i you know honestly i don't even remember that part Okay. Um, but as I said, I got very confused and it was like, then again, I got very confused in Lord of the Rings too. So, 
Oh, really? Oh, I really funny. did. I really did. Yeah. So. Well, there is a lot going on. Uh, look, Michael, these are my notes. Yeah. Well, I didn't take any notes. So yeah, I, I, I have three pages of notes, folks, basically per episode. Uh, that's. Um, hmm. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, here we go. This is the second episode. I have two, three pages of notes as well. Every episode today had three pages of notes. That's how much I write. So, mm. um, I knew it was an orc that was around, but I don't know what that thing on the hill was. So, I'm curious. So, things are starting to happen in Middle Earth. Galadriel is the only one that believes that things are still not right in her heart. Remember she comments about that? Because mm-hmm. there's yeah. no peace. I still feel it. And as I mentioned earlier, she mentioned that when her brother died there in the darkness, his vow became mine. And that vow was to rid Middle Earth of the evil of Sauron. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which all they know is Sauron is the 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 remaining guy from Morgoth, because they defeated Morgoth. So I was going to ask Dream, because he knows the Lord of the Rings timeline very well, that this is even before the Battle of the One Ring, which we see at the very beginning of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Yes. That's why I forget how many years are in an era in the Lord of the Rings. Because I believe it's each era, the second age is like three to 5,000 years. So there's a lot of time. And this is like way before. Because remember, Elrond tells uh, Aragorn, yes, I was there 3,000 years ago when your heirs blew it. So I was. I wanted to know if that was in the first age, second age, or third age. So we'll see. Hmm. Um, the second age, I, I don't know how many years it is in between, but I know it's cl- a long time before The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So if it is a long time, I'm I'm certain it's before Aragorn, I'm sorry, Elrond and Isildur have to deal with uh, Sauron. And as we see, because Isildur is the one that cut his fingers off. Oh. oh. So I'm betting that is after the events that we're seeing now. So uh, who do you think that guy is? Or that individual that came through that meteor or comet or whatever. That oh, I life. have no idea. Really? Uh, I really don't. Does I anyone really in the don't. audience? I'm wondering because I'm betting that's Gandalf. Well, I was thinking, but you know, I it would it would make sense, I guess, from what I know of you know everything. But and that that could be right. That could be right. All right. But now, um, was that the only, want to call it, meteor that there was? Or, oh, very good. Or, you know, th- that I wasn't sure about. Yes, that, that, okay. At the very end of the episode, we know what happens. Galadriel's like, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> so, was she thrown out as well by a meteor? And was this other person, were there two meteors? That's a very good question, uh, Michael. And if you haven't seen the second episode, that one will be answered. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to leave that one. We can talk about the second episode and the third next week. But um, did you see the previews for The One Ring? I did not. You were fortunate then. I did. And I... I I just saw them as a taste. I'm I'm happy. There's a lot going on. And it is difficult being older to capture the names. But I'm starting to get them more and more now. And since I, I made a deliberate effort to write their names down, uh, I was uh, getting their names a little bit more, which is really good. Mm. So uh, I, I'm in. I, I'm, I like I'm, I'm I terrible at names, so it doesn't help um, trying to remember them. So. Well, that's okay. Yeah. I'm really surprised that I'm still able to do it right now. It is only 97 degrees outside. I am 
dying, buddy. Oh, that's not bad. It got to 108 today. Oh, inside or outside? Outside. Oh, okay. It was 81 degrees indoors, so I had to had to put the uh, uh, AC much stronger. But now in the last hour, I think it's dropped like five degrees, so I guess it's a little bit better. But anyway. Yeah, but still, um, that's, that's more. Uh, just very quickly, folks, as I mentioned on episode two of House of the Dragon, the episode was the Rogue Prince. This one I did, as you know, I gave the first episode a C plus. This one uh, I'm giving it a B minus because strategically it moved forward. And on the Amazon Prime, the One Ring, the first episode, I was really, really happy. There is a lot going on. And when you see part two, they work together. And I'm going to give this episode a B minus because they established quite a bit. There's, as I mentioned, there's a lot going on, and they there's enough of a tease that I was entertained. My my opinion is for the first one, they shadow the past. I'm giving it a B minus. This new House of the Ring episode. The Road Princess, I'm also giving that one a B minus, which is an increase of episode one, which was a C plus. Did you see the uh the house of the dragon? Yes, both of them, yeah. What did you think of that the latest episode? I like I liked it better than the first. Um and the story is it it is progressing now. Um I I love the dragons. What can I say? Um, yeah. They are unique in in this. They they seem, I don't know. They look different than the dragons that I remember from Game of Thrones. Now, I don't know if I'm just not remembering you know what they how they did them but they just don't look the same and i don't know if that's i'm not remembering or i don't know what do you did you ever know to think that they were different looking or didn't you even notice i didn't really consider that uh i did notice a difference in dinosaurs in jurassic park from one to two to three but for this one i it's been so long, yeah, 2019, yeah, so long, that the dragons, I just remember them. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess they look more real if there is such a thing. So uh, I really didn't notice too much if they were different. I guess I was really trying to watch more of the plot. I'm trying to pay attention. I'm really trying to pay attention <laughs> on this one. Um. I don't know what your thoughts. Look, the first one, uh, as I mentioned, is like, look, it's done. You've got to lay the groundwork. This this is going to be a multi-year. If they're good at what they do, it's going to be a multi-year series. I don't know how many years it's going to go, but this could conceivably go five, six, seven, eight years. Yeah, that's true. The other one went six, seven? Well, it went six full years. Seven was cut down, as was six. Uh, I'm sorry. Seven was cut down, and then eight was cut down in like six episodes. Yeah. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Martin was begging HBO, and apparently HBO was begging. I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. Okay. We're really going to go off tangent right now, folks. And Michael and I have had the t- chance to have lots of conversations about this stuff. And one of the irrit- – there's a point to this. Michael and I have laughed and we've scoffed when we've heard about Star Wars, The Last Jedi, how Rain Johnson did whatever he wanted to do. Okay. That's impossible. Michael and I, no, no, it's not impossible. Disney gave him $200 million to do a movie, which they signed off on, 
and which they approve. Well, it's the same thing. They're not going to give anyone. They didn't give J.J. Abrams that amount of money. Rain Johnson is not. Okay. Okay. Michael, when does the studio give anyone money and a blank check to do whatever they want? Not that I've known, except it's it's too, it's too much money. It, it's, it's just well, and it's too much risk. I yes. mean, they 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 don't like risk, and they're not going to sign off on anything. And they they grab their purse strings. They don't want things to escalate, or they shut it down. And they have <laughs> shut down movies before. Yes, and you people are forgetting that they kicked off Trevor, you know, the the guy from Jurassic World in the last movie. Because they didn't like what was going on, and they kicked off the two kids and the the Han Solo movie. They were almost done with that movie. Wow, no, no, they weren't. But the point is that they were so far along that they said, "Nope, nope, nope, that's it. You're out." So for them to say, and Disney has really been coy about this, they've never admitted it, but everyone believes that Rain Johnson did whatever he wanted on the last shade, and that's just absolutely one hundred percent not true. Disney was behind it. 100 percent and they're the ones that finally let it out so to have this belief that eight you know that the studios just let do whatever you want I mean, no the only ones that can actually do that are maybe steven spielberg and james cameron maybe but they have to have an idea they have to have i mean they have to impress upon the studio, and the studio will say, go ahead and do it. It turns out that James Cameron is doing it on his own anyway. he knows He's financing his own movie. Well, that's the other way that you can do what you want, is George you finance your own movie. So Yes. Yeah, George Lucas did the same thing. So what, what, what I don't understand is I have heard, now knowing that on the production companies, how they operate, how – there's this thing going out that George R. R. Martin was, you know, kept out of the last two years by the producers. And that they weren't, uh, it was, they'd already made the decision to leave. And that HBO wanted the producers to go maybe even 10 years. George R. R. Martin was like, there's enough material that we could do that. But the producers apparently wanted out, and they they really fought with the studio. And you know they had a freer hand in delivering the product, and they wanted to leave early. And HBO had a cash cow with those two producers, and they wanted out. So HBO only got eight years out of Game of Thrones. They wanted ten. I think that's one of the only times that the studio didn't get their way. Now, with this one, House of the Dragon, I've got to believe, Michael, that if it's a hit, they're going to go as long as they can with this one. Because I understand that George R. R. Martin is an executive producer on the series, as opposed to the other one, where he was just a contributing. Because, you know, he used to write an episode a year. Yeah, and then it, then he quit doing that. for it was He was behind, I believe. Well, I think he's 20 years behind on his latest book. Mm-hmm, yeah. So go figure. Yeah. But okay, be this as it may. Uh, the first episode, I guess, on a scale, if you want to grade it, what would you say the first episode of Game of Thrones and then the second episode? First one, I gave it a C, plus, only because there was a lot to establish and it, it was good enough to get it going. But when you compare it to episode one of Game of Thrones, oh my goodness. In the first 10 minutes, you learned so much in the Game of Thrones universe. Oh, in you, the do. Original series. you do. And, and this I, one took a while longer to get going. No, I agree. I agree. Now, I I mean, I honestly almost shut Game of Thrones off after the first 10 minutes because oh, wow. it was it was it was too violent for me. I mean, or scary. I don't know what it was, but it was like I was ready to shut it down until the opening credits came on. And wow. the opening credits impressed me so much, I kept watching the show. So I, wow. was, I was very glad that they put 
some type of opening credits back in on episode two of um, House of the Dragon. Yes, I commented about that. I said, yep, back to the universe, back to normal. Yeah. Had the music. Had the music. Almost and- the exact same. I, I don't know if it, I noticed that there was, well, I detected a subtle difference in the music. That's all, but it was the same thing. Well, if you listen to original Game of Thrones every single week, it was uh, a different. Well, it was different. So it, it it was different sometimes in the length, because in the original Game of Thrones opening credits, they would give you a preview of where they were going to where they were going. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, this one doesn't have it because it's almost all in the Seven Kingdoms. It's in the realm, so it's not the same. But mm-hmm. I do like this this uh, opening credits. It just felt cool again. It's like, hey, it's Game of Thrones, man. Yeah, yeah, it had that feel. So, so I don't know why they didn't put it in the first. Maybe I don't know. To be different, just to be different. What what is your grade on that one? What what do you think on the first episode of Game of Thrones? And then the second episode, or I'm sorry, House of the Dragon. My first one was a C plus, and the second tonight, or last week was a B minus. Yeah, well, I would, I, I would say a C plus probably the first. I would actually oh, wow. grade second one a B. Oh wow, cool! Um, I said I liked it that much better. I don't know because they had the opening credits. I don't know, but but it but it did start moving. Um, and I mean, I mean that was, and I think maybe it's because I started to get to know the characters better. Because that first one, you know, it was like I did not know where this was, who anybody was. So, but I, I did start to know who some of these people were. So, fair enough. I'm not going to repeat some of the stuff that I spoke about in the beginning of the episode, but I do want to remind everyone that HBO's House of the Dragon will episode three will debut in about uh, seven to eight minutes. We will obviously finish beforehand. I think we're going to just go a few more minutes and then we can let everyone get to it. And then next week, we will obviously be here for episode uh, three to review Game of Thrones also, or House of the Dragon. And the third episode, we're going to do two and three of the One Ring and uh, we're going to move forward on that. So that's what we have scheduled for next week. Uh, Lord Michael, what are some of your thoughts for the episodes so that we could uh, just finish up here early? Thoughts? Um, I'm looking forward to try to get to know the characters um, for um, the Ring of Power because, I mean, that, that's, I don't know them yet. And so I think when I get to know them better, it's going to be easier Luis Costa. Luis, thank you. Good three episode from Brazil. Thank you, Luis. We hope you enjoy the next Game of Thrones episode as well. We're going to watch in a few minutes. But Luis, thank you for sharing with us from Brazil. We have not had anyone yet from Brazil. Folks, we are stunned at the worldwide audience that we've been having on this episode. Please comment. Let us know where you are, where you hail from. If you have any drawings that you've done, sorry, Michael, I, I, I got caught up in this. I apologize. No, no I, and, I and get it. Your your items, your collections, anything. Uh, you know, this is from the One Ring, and of course Game of Thrones. And then you can see my pendants in the back. So I'm probably going to have to get a pendant or two for Lord Michael to have it back there with him. But <laughs> thank you, folks. We we do appreciate that you're spending time with us. But it's almost time to watch episode three of Game of Thrones. So next week we're going to talk episode three. And episodes two and three of the One Ring as well. So be ready to go. We might have to start even earlier. I don't know. It's too damn hot right now. But folks, go and have a good time. Michael, again, your last thoughts. Because in House of the Dragon, the conversation between... um, Oh my goodness. You see, I'm not getting her name as well. Rhaenyra and her, her aunt. When the king is down... Having the cover, you know, with these twelve-year-old, and, and they're out on the veranda or whatever. You yes, know. they're on the veranda, and she makes it clear. He says, uh, "I know what the order of things are. Do you?" 
Well, then did she say do you or did she say I don't think you do? I mean, what? Right. She is. Well, the queen says, uh, well, the, the queen that never was says, the never I was. know the order of things. Do you know the order of things? And she says, look, I'm just going to have to make it an order once I'm queen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So said the 15 year old fan. <laughs> But it's very real. She's now received advice from two older women about knowing things. So her mama said their battlefield is there, remember? Mm. And now in this episode, she's men will burn the empire, the realm down before a woman is seated on the throne. Do you know that? So we'll see. And then Alicent being the wife to be. I was joking earlier. I said, is Allison older than her or is she a day younger? Oh. Yeah, I was wondering that too. I think it would be the ultimate slap in the face if she's younger, even by a day. That's got to yeah. come into play. Mm -hmm. Any other quick thoughts? No, that's that's about it. It's probably almost time. So, Folks, I think we're going to be spending more time next week. We'll see what we're going to do. We may start a bit earlier because now we have two big programs to go over and we have a lot. We're probably going to do some catch-ups as well. But for now, we're going to kill it now because – oh, and, well, we're going to cut it now. But we're going to let everyone get to HBO. And again, Luis, thank you. Appreciate it. Folks, we love your comments. We know you're watching – Share with us, man, and uh, we, we thank you. We'll take them. Portuguese, English, man. With Microsoft Translator, you can do anything. <laughs> so on behalf of Lord Michael, I am Lord Roger of the House of Fontenelle. Uh, we're out for now. We'll see you guys next week. And tomorrow, I think we're going to have a professionals episode on the network. On Tuesday, Almighty Sports Show debuts on this network, and Comics 101 is on Wednesday. Check it out at ndbmedia.net. A lot of stuff going on. We'll see you guys on the other side.